Hello everyone, my name is Jyoti. I'm a CCNA and CCNP corporate trainer working at Coenix Solutions. So in this video, we will be discussing about OSI model or OSI reference model. So what is OSI model? It is nothing but the set of rules or set of standards in the IT industry or computer industry. To understand that, let's talk a little bit about the history of computer industry. Long ago, there was a fierce battle between IBM and Digital Equipment Corporation to become the leading computer manufacturer. But the problem was that the devices manufactured by these companies were not compatible to each other. So if you have bought computer from IBM, then you need to buy a monitor, printer, every other accessory from IBM only. Similarly, if you have bought computer from Digital Equipment Corporation, you need to buy other accessories like printers, scanners, monitors, everything from Digital Equipment Corporation because there was compatibility issue. So let's say in some company, the accounts department has devices from IBM and other department has devices from Digital Equipment Corporation. They will not be able to communicate or share information, which is a big problem. Thus, to overcome this issue, ISO came into picture and developed the OSI reference model to give a standard approach. OSI model use a layered approach which gives a standard and ISO made this model. ISO stands for International Organization for Standards. So OSI model means Open System Interconnect Model it was developed by International Organization for Standards in 1974. It consists of seven layers. Each layer has a specific but different processing function. So let's discuss the functions of these layers one by one. So starting with the layers of OSI model, there are these seven layers, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. They are numbered from layer seven to layer one from top to down. So layer seven is application layer, six presentation layer, five session layer, four transport layer, three network layer, two data link layer, and one physical layer. So this is in a appropriate sequence. So you have to memorize it in this particular sequence only. So for that, we can also use mnemonics there is one mnemonic if you want to memorize it from layer seven to layer one. There is one mnemonic that all people seem to need data processing. Or if you want to memorize it other way around from layer one to seven, there's another mnemonic that you can use that's please do not throw sausage pizza away. Okay. Then the top three layers, application, presentation, and session layer are upper layers or software layers. Then the transport layer is called the heart of OSI and the bottom three layers are called lower layers or hardware layers. Okay, let's discuss these functions of these seven layers one by one as each layer has a specific and different function, starting with application layer. So application layer is responsible for providing networking services to the users. It is also known as desktop layer the identification of services is done using port numbers here. So port numbers, what are port numbers? These are the entry and exit points to the layers. Total number of ports are 0 to 65535, out of which there are reserved ports and open client ports. The reserved port range is 0 to 1023, and open client port range is 1024265535. So these services are identified using their port numbers. For example, HTTP has a fixed port number 80, FTP 21, SMTP 25, Telnet 23, TFTP 69 from the reserved port ranges that we just discussed. So there are all these port numbers reserved for specific service by which the type of service is identified on the application layer using these port numbers. Then the presentation layer. The presentation layer is responsible for converting the data into standard format by mapping resources and creating context. Let's say the sender is sending a music file. So the receiver has to receive it in a 
standard or a presentable format to understand. So it should be in the MP3 or MP4 format. So doing that is by different functions involved here, that is encoding, decoding, encryption, decryption, decryption and compression, decompression. So making the data a presentable data or converting the data into a presentable or standard format is done on the presentation layer. Then the session layer. The session layer is the connection handler. It is responsible in creating, maintaining, and terminating sessions. So every session that is created in a network is given a unique session ID on the session layer by which it is identified. And maintaining the sessions, creating a session and terminating a session is done on the session layer. For example, the login and log off scripts. Then the transport layer, that's the heart of OSI model. There are several functions involved that takes place on the transport layer. The first is identifying services. So the identification of services is done here. Then multiplexing, demultiplexing, segmentation, sequencing and reassembling, error correction and flow control. Here, the identification of services is not the same as the application layer. Here, the identification of services is done on the basis of TCP or UDP. The services that are identified on the application layer can be TCP or UDP, two types of services are there. So which identification is done on the transport layer? So what is the difference between TCP and UDP? TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. The difference is TCP is reliable, whereas UDP is unreliable. TCP is connection-oriented, whereas UDP is connection-less. TCP has segment retransmission and flow control through windowing, whereas in UDP, there is no windowing or retransmission. In TCP, there is segment sequencing, whereas in UDP, there is no sequencing. In TCP, there is acknowledgement for all the segments, whereas in UDP, there is no acknowledgement. For example, web browsing is an example of TCP, whereas a real-time example of UDP is phone call. So other examples are HTTP, FTP, these services which are reliable or connection oriented are TCP, whereas real-time traffic or real-time services are UDP. Then the network layer. The network layer is used to route data between different nodes on the network. It uses addresses to be able to tell which computer to send information to. This layer can also break apart larger messages into smaller chunks to be reassembled on the opposite end. So basically on the network layer, the identification of the IP addresses, the identification of the destination by finding the best path is done. So the finding of best path is done on the network layer. So the main functions involved on this layer are defining IP address, find routes based on IP address to reach its destination. Then the protocols that work on the network layer are two types of protocols, routed protocols and routing protocols. The routed protocols are IP, IPX, Apple Talk, and routing protocols are RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, BGP, ISIS, etc. So to identify the IP, IPX, these are used, the routing protocols are, the routed protocols are used. And to find the best path, the best path selection is done by the routing protocols like RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, BGP, ISIS. So to work on this layer, the devices that works on this layer are routers. Then the data link layer. The main functions of the data link layer are defining the MAC address or the hardware address, defining the physical or hardware topology for connections, defining how the network layer protocol is encapsulated in the data link layer frame, providing both connectionless and connection oriented services, defines hardware MAC addresses as well as the communication process that occurs within a medium. The devices that works on this layer are switches. 
then the physical layer layer 1 the physical layer is responsible for handling the actual physical devices that are used to make a connection this layer involves the bare software that manages physical connections as well as the hardware itself like ethernet responsible for the electrical mechanical and timing across the link physical layer deals with communication media this layer receives frames from data link layer and convert them into bits. It loads these bits on actual communication media depending on media type. These bit values are converted in single. Some use audio tones while other utilize state transitions, changes in voltage from high to low, low to high. Thus, the devices that works on this layer that understands bits or electrical signals are hubs, repeaters, cables, etc. So these are the seven layers of OSI model. These were the seven layers with different functions of these layers and specific functions. So this is how the data is transmitted from the sender to the receiver. It goes from layer seven from the sender's end from layer seven to layer one and then from layer one to layer seven it is received by the receiver. On every layer there are different functions that are involved that takes place. The top three layers that are the software layers, the protocol data unit, the unit by which the data is identified is the same as data. Then from the transport layer, they start adding the headers and the protocol data unit changes to different units. Like on application presentation and session layer, it is data. Whereas on the transport layer, the protocol data unit is segment. On the network layer, the protocol data unit is packet. On the data link layer, it's frames. And on the physical layer, it's bits. So these are the protocol data units. So from sender to the receiver, the protocol data units used from layer seven to layer one and from layer one to layer seven are these. So this was OSI model. Thank you for listening.